Hi everyone, it's Agnes. I've got another interview today. Today it's with Priscilla. She's in Massachusetts, USA. Hello, Pr Priscilla. Hi, Agnes. How are you? I'm really good. Happy to see you because... Um, yeah, good to see you. <laughs> yeah, I'm really excited to... Well, I know parts of your story, but I'm excited to hear how it all progressed. So I'm going to hand it over to you today. We're talking about meaningful work and how you got to have, you went from working not where you wanted to where you wanted and the journey in between. So I'm going to hand it over to you to share how that happened. Sounds good. <laughs> so I, when I was married and then I was, so um, I had this idea what my career would look like. It would be a career in education, but because of, um, I was married, I kind of put myself second and uh i left you know but my ex-husband's career be first mm -hmm. and then um that thought of me being second and somebody else being first it kind of became part of who i was and then after my marriage fell apart i so i didn't stop working but i only start i continue working only part-time after my marriage fell apart, I had no job. <laughs> well, I had like a part-time job that I only make like very little money. So I started going back to interviewing to be a professor again full time. Yeah. And um, now that's so people understand the timing that it took me two years to get the job of, that I wanted. But I started and then I started going to interviews and what happened was that every interview i went so when you're a professor you get to go through three three interviews phone interview a skype or zoom interview and then finally they decide they invite you to go to campus okay. so i went to several campus interviews and then at the end it was i and the other person and in all of them they chose the other person and I was so frustrated. I said, why is it I am all the time the second? And then I'll ask for feedback. And then they will say, no, there was nothing really that you did wrong. We just went with the other person. Mm -hmm. We told you you were great, but we just went with the other person. And I kept thinking, but okay, so if I was so great, why did you keep choosing everybody else? <laughs> exactly. And not me. So, but I didn't understand these like I didn't put things together and then in the jobs that I went on the interview so I was coming from you know like thinking that my ex-husband was first and then I kind of that I was second and he makes still makes a lot of money and I thought I will never be able to these were my thoughts I will never be able to make that much money so the jobs that I went to interview and then I got the job offer they pay very little money Mm. Let's say they pay like in the 40s or in the 30,000, which is like very little. Yeah. And then I say, oh my God, so I couldn't, I, some of the jobs that I got the job, I have to say no, because if I used to live in Florida, if I moved where the jobs were, I was not even going to be able to live on that money. Mm. Like I will be going into debt in order to pay. Yeah. What I had to pay. So I'm like, that, it didn't make sense in my mind to get a job that will make me be worse off instead yeah. of better off so i was so frustrated i had i was in depression i had no idea what was going on i just like why is happening and then, of course i had friends telling me maybe you have to change careers but like, mm -hmm. this is what i love being a professor is what i love yeah maybe you have to do something else so oh sometimes people are born to do other stuff that they think they are meant to do and then i have my excitement say well you know what like it's going to be very hard somebody to hire you because you have two kids. And then I have my colleagues saying it's very hard to jump back in mm. in your career after taking such a long break for working full time for six years. I didn't work full time. Uh, so then all these thoughts became yeah. part of my thoughts. All the, what they were saying became part of my thoughts, therefore became my reality. Yeah. So I started thinking, I'm like, I, 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 I don't understand what's going on. So then one day my sister posted on her Facebook a video from Raymond Sanso, which is a, he's a Spanish author. 
Yes. And he talked about how like you have to think big and how you have to create your reality. So then that reminded me of The Secret. And I said, oh, I watched The Secret and I thought it was a bunch of BS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Long time ago. Yeah. But I said, well, maybe that will make sense now. I don't know. So then I started Googling and then I got, for some reason, the universe sent me to your channel. Ah. So then I started watching you and then you started talking all your or your uh, videos were more about the other per the special person which i also had like a thing going with that too and so then i started watching i remember i i think i watched them most of them like within two nights wow. <laughs> and, like i watched watch, watch. Wow. <laughs> so then you will recommend okay like i love yourself like your life depends on it so then i read that and then you recommend this other video about Abraham Hicks. So I watched that. Like I watched everything. <laughs> and then you started talking about Neville Goddard and I never heard of it in my life. So then I downloaded books from Amazon. So within like a month or less, I have read and watched everything that you have recommended. Wow. <laughs> because when I like, when something, and this is part of how I am, like when some, when I'm excited about something or something start making sense, mm. I just become like upset that I want to know more. Yeah. Yeah. So then I finally contacted you and we had a, the, this, a, a session and then uh, you told me, bro, it seems that you have this, I'm second best thought going on. Yeah. And that was kind of like, oh, duh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of, so then I, after I talked to you the first time, I thought this now, everything makes so much sense to me. Like how I started feeling second since I started putting my husband career first and yeah. my family life first. And then that second became who I am. Yeah. So, and then, uh, so then I thought, okay, so I did the, I love myself. And then all the affirmations that you told me, I'm first best, I'm first best, I'm first best. And it was, you know, this work for maybe two months. At the same time, I was still applying. When you're applying for faculty jobs, you apply in the fall to be hired the following fall. Mm. Ah. So it's a long, one year long, well, a long, um, a year long process. So then, but I, you know, it was just, kind of the beginning of the transformation so of course there were some days that I had great time and then some days I'm like this la Australian lady Agnes here yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if she's right or not but then okay fine then we talk again and I'm like okay we, you know it makes sense and I keep going and one one day I started listening to Dan Mm. I also talked to Dan once, yeah. and then I, and then I, and then I say one one day like I was having a hard time. I say okay, like I'm working on this. I need a sign that this is working. Mm. But that day I got a f informal call from the job that I have now. That uh, my boss called me and said, "Do you have time to call? We are interested in doing a phone interview with you, but I just want to know if you're is, is still interested." Because I sent my application like three months or four months before. So oh. sometimes people just want to withdraw or not interested anymore. So I said, hell no, of course I'm interested. Yeah. <laughs> right. So then I, have, I, I said, yes, I'm interested. So he said, we'll call you in two weeks to schedule the interview. And then I, I remember thinking, you know, I always wanted to, I said, when I go back to be a full-time professor, I wanted to get a job before the holidays, before the holidays. So I, the holidays come and I already have peace of mind. They already have this job. Yeah. And then, oh, how great it will be. I remember I talked to you about this. How great it will be if I get two jobs that what I can mm -hmm. choose from instead of one job, because then one job, I feel like I have to choose that job instead yeah. of two. Yeah. So, so when I was waiting for the call for these people to call me back, I got another call to set up an interview for another job. And that job was good too. So I had a, I said, okay. So I set up that interview and then this first university called me and that interview was a few days before the second one. Ah, so, okay. uh -huh, so, so they call me. 
so they call me and say, okay, they, they call me on the phone and then they say, we want to do um, another a Skype interview. And then, and then from there, we decide we want you to campus. I said, okay, yeah, that's the normal thing. But they did the phone interview, and within an hour, they called me to invite me to campus. They skipped the Skype interview. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And so then I made, I already have made a, a visualization board. I remember, I remember you suggested when I wrote this the range of salary that I wanted to have. Yeah. But in reality, I had an idea in my mind of a specific amount. Yes. Because I remember I asked my, one of my friends, how that is from this area where my job is in Massachusetts, I asked it, how much would I, a single mom, two kids will need to live? And she said this amount. Yeah. So then I had that in mind, but I, my board, visualization board, I wrote down yeah. a range. Okay. And then I put, I, I want to work uh, at a place where it's more focused on teaching rather than research, but I can still do some little research. Yeah. I want to work at a place where people are nice and kind because in academia, you have to deal with a lot of egos. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm like, I don't do well with that. So like where people are nice and kind and, um, and I want to like, you know, the, the students like how I teach and I feel comfortable so I can be myself. And I wrote everything down and I, yeah. and I want, I would like to buy a home and live with my kids. Now I had no money when I was writing these things. Yeah. Like I have yeah. zero savings, zero, you know, very yeah. tiny little income. And I wrote like, I, and I wanted, and I had, and I, I was thinking I could have to get an au pair to take care of my kids. So I would need to buy a second car. So I wrote. And I want a two-car garage if I buy the house. And then yeah. I, and I have to buy a second car. And I wrote, like, all of this. Yeah. It was like, a, oh, yeah, cool. I can write all these things. Wow. <laughs> and, then, uh, um, and then I came to this job, the job that I have now. I came on November, tw um, before Thanksgiving. They called me and said, well, we want you to invite you to campus. They skipped the Skype interview. When I went to the interview, I was so impressed with the, with the people. The people were so nice, which it didn't happen like in other places. People were more, yeah. over there, people were just so open. They were very welcoming. It's a, teaching, it's a teaching oriented school. Mm. It's in the middle of nowhere, but teaching oriented. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then it's a, uh, the program. What I teach is in the College of Business, which is something that I wanted because in other universities, it's in the College of Education. Yeah. So it's better for my career if it's in the College of Business. The university is going through a transition. They explained to me where professors are not going to be only asked to teach, also do a little bit of research, which was in my visualization board. Yeah. Two. So, and then I... And then they were, they seem excited They I applied for the position that they wanted me. So when I left from that interview, I was feeling so positive. And I said, if I don't get this, <laughs> this offer, I'll quit watching a new channel. <laughs> I said, no, I felt like the way how I was feeling, it was totally different when I felt the other, uh, when I left the other interviews because in the other interviews even though they went well i was thinking i wonder what the other candidate did i wonder how the other candidate did yeah maybe the other person did it maybe they, they did they probably taught the class because when you go to this interview you have to teach a class okay. maybe they did a better job teaching a class maybe yeah. they so i was focusing all my energy on wondering what the other how the other person did and probably the wow. other person did better and of yeah. course the other person <laughs> did better because they got the job wow. but when i when i left this interview i was it was totally different i was thinking i did really good i was in the airplane going back to florida i was like man i rocked the house nice. <laughs> but but my mind chatter was like no, you didn't. You still went away. No, shut up. Yeah. I wrote that. Yeah. I did a very good job. So then when I started hearing, well, maybe the other person they interview, and then I said, no, you know, I love myself. I did it. So I was like, <laughs> this. I, I, was, I was sitting calmly in the airplane drinking my water, but I, my mom was like, <laughs> isn't so that, I was like, Priscilla, isn't that great? Because that's like the transition from second yeah. to first best, second best to first. Yeah. 
so first but, right so so then this interview was thursday the thursday before thanksgiving yeah. and then i um and then i got it was thursday and then i left at night so then i arrived I home like basically friday early morning and then I, they told me, okay, we'll call you after Thanksgiving uh, to let you know. And I said, okay, that's normal. Anyway, after Thanksgiving, I had scheduled the other interview. Yeah. So, well, Monday before Thanksgiving came, which it was, you know, I just came to the interview Thursday, then Friday, then Monday. Yeah. They sent me an email and said, okay, so we're going to make you an offer and we're going to send you the official letter, but we just want you to know then and these are the conditions and i went when i opened it the an official letter i saw the salary and it was exactly the salary that i brought that i had in my mind i couldn't but it just blew my mind away wow. and they and then i thought oh my god and they said but the only thing is that we need to know soon because otherwise we'll move forward the, with the other yeah. person because we want to make sure that we get all wrapped up before yeah. the holidays. Wow. And I said, oh my God, I always <laughs> wanted to have a job before the holidays. <laughs> so then I thought, oh, okay. So I told them, give me, can you give me after Thanksgiving so that I will spend Thanksgiving trying to decide. I already had made my decision. But I told them, you know, try yeah. to, to, to decide. And they say, yes, no problem. And then they sent me the packet with like all the benefits. It had all the benefits. And it was just absolutely wonderful. And then the, uh, one of the professors, I told her, I'm going to go away with my kids during Thanksgiving. After Thanksgiving, before even I say yes to the job, she sent me an email to check on me, how everything went. Mm. I'm like, what a nice group of people. Wow. So, so then, I, mm -hmm. can I ask you, were yeah. you still thinking at that point, oh no, now I can't go to the second interview. I've got to make a decision. Were you kind of wishing? You I was thinking, go? I was thinking, well, I already have this offer that has everything I want. Yep. And then I, I'm going to contact, uh, contact the other company, the other university. Yep. And I called call them and I said, how many people are you interviewing? Because that was the first step. Was yep. the, the, sky, the second step, the Skype. How many people you have? And they say five. And I said, you know what? I already have like this offer that I have to make a decision for. And I felt comfortable with that. It wasn't nothing inside me. They were telling me, yeah. was telling me, no, no, yeah. no. So then I told them like, I really appreciate it, but I had this one that I could not pass. And they understood. They said, no, it, it's okay. We understand because they understand the, you know, the, yeah. the industry and the business. Yeah. So I, I didn't want to burn the bridge and just said, you know, I withdraw. Yeah. I wanted to explain why. Yes. So then they say, no, no problem. So then there I was. I had no job prospects. I was always second. And then suddenly I was saying no to an interview. And I had an offer for the salary that I wrote with the benefits. Oh, and there's another thing. I wanted to leave. So I live in Florida, but I wasn't very happy there because there were not many. There are not many universities there. Yeah. And, I, and there are many universities in this area in New England. And I always, like since maybe 2015, I said, oh, that is what I would like to live. I would like to live in New England. Yeah. And, and I used to date a guy from New England. So I said, oh, how about if I get back to New England? Yeah. <laughs> but I, so I, I always thought, well, there, were, like, there are many universities there. It could be good for my career. Yeah. So when I was, after I talked to you, and then I read the Neville books, I remember the Neville story with, the girl that got the money from, when she imagined that the, her tears were not her tears, but the salt, oh. the water. Yeah, she so was when I, train or something, and she wanted the holiday. Yeah. She was pretending yeah. it was the, the splash of the ocean. Yeah. That's yeah. Story. So, so when I was driving uh, in Florida, when I was driving somewhere, I was like, okay, I'm not in Florida. I'm somewhere in New England. I'm not driving to go and pick up my kids. I'm driving to go and... Um, to my work right now mm -hmm. or I, I i'm not going back from picking up my kids in my mind my kids were in the back <laughs> but in my mind i was i'm coming back to work yeah. i'm coming back and this this was part of my imaginary work too so then i um then i got have i said yes to the job before the holidays so yeah. the holidays came and i have the job wow. and then one thing was moving from florida to massachusetts is a lot of money yeah. So 
uh, other universities that I have to say no, they offer me only like a thousand dollars in moving expenses, which is yeah. nothing. Yeah. And I said, so they, they sent me an email saying, we're going to give you this amount of money for moving. And I thought, oh my God, that's so little. So I said, okay, I'm going to leave in the end. Like, like I said, I'm going to write, I wrote them an email. I said, it costs this amount to move from Florida to Massachusetts. It yeah. would be great if you could uh, give me more. Yes. Uh, and then, and then that, was, that was it. And then I kept living in the end thinking that I will open my email and then I see they will cover the whole moving expenses. Yeah. And I kept thinking, like, I, it wasn't even two hours later. I got an email back and said, we'll cover all the moving expenses. Priscilla, you know, you know what I love is your letter to uh, your your um your letter to ask them was so simple. You didn't, you didn't write all this stuff. You just went, look, I'm moving yeah. from Florida to Massachusetts. It's going to yeah. cost this. Can you cover the expenses? End of yeah. story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I also remember that I read an article saying that men seem to advance faster in terms of salary than women because men ask what they need without. Yeah. Oh, all the and women are all the time trying to justify what they need mm -hmm. things. So, and then I said, no, I'm gonna leave in the end. If they say no, they say no. Yeah. But if if they, you know, I don't lose anything by asking. And then I just wrote it like that. And then I got not, not even two hours later, they said we'll cover all the moving expenses. So wow. they cover all the moving expenses. <laughs> so when I was telling some of my colleagues, first of all, they couldn't believe that I got a job <laughs> as a as a professor again. After Full time after taking a break from being a professor full time, yeah. I was only part time. Then uh, when they asked me how much I was gonna get paid, like so they were like, "What? So you took a break from being a full time professor? You're gonna make more money than what we make? <laughs> 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 Still be there?" And then and I have like all the benefits. I'm like, "Oh!" And they are covering all the moving expenses, and they're like, "What? Well, they desperate finding trying to find people." <laughs> Oh. So like, and so like no they really want me because yeah. before i would think oh yeah they probably were really desperate like no no, <laughs> they, no. yeah oh so. that's so good so how long have you been at that job now so oh, this is an old, like great thing like usually yeah. you, usually jobs start in august or september so they start paying you like a month after yeah. So I thought, oh my gosh, I have to move there like in the summer and I'm going to be all this month yeah. with that salary. Yeah. It will be great if they will start paying earlier. Well, they start paying July 1st. So I had no break in between of wow. what I was getting paid to. It was just it was, it was just amazing that I, I mean, I'm still, when I tell this story, sometimes I'm like, if I tell the story to people that are not mine, like, right, they don't think yeah. like, as a scientist, we'll think that I'm making everything up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's so, it, 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 yeah. it, you did so much work on your own second <laughs> yeah. bed. It's yeah. so brilliant. It is so, yeah. so, so brilliant. So how long, it, have, you, how long have you been there now <laughs> at the job? So I moved to, so, um, you, I started in, so I moved to Massachusetts in July. Yeah. And then I, my job started at the end of August. Like okay. that's when I went to, so, and then I got an email today from one of, so she's the director of academic advising. And then she said, Priscilla, uh, your students are loving you. Like capital A, your students are loving you. And then remember that I said, like, I really want to yeah. work in a place where students really like me. Yeah. But we'll, we'll see what happens after the first exam. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. If the feeling is going to stay. <laughs> that, that is just such a great story. It is just, yeah. it just goes to show that everything is, again, what we think and what we believe about ourselves. Yeah. You just you just smashed all your old beliefs. Yeah, exactly. And it had to be like it was not surprising how it kept repeating. Like how because uh, I was able after I talked to you the first time, I said like, "Whoa, yeah, they yeah. did it." Like how I became to think that I was second. Yeah. I was second, which I came from Costa Rica. That's my country or yeah. home country, the yeah. United States, by myself when I was twenty one. And I was able to uh, learn a sec learn English, and then put myself through my master's and my doctorate. You know, like I was, yeah. it wasn't. I was, I was not thinking that I was second. 
No. But then I, I, that became part of who I, who I was, yeah. this thought. And then that transformed my life and where my life was. Yeah. But, and I didn't, you know, realize yeah. it. And then I, and the pattern kept repeating. Like I kept going to the interviews for like two years, two years. Yeah. yeah. And they keep choosing the other person or the, or getting, giving me a job, but with very tiny little salary because I didn't feel that I was worth it. I thought, uh, well, who's going to pay it? Who's going to pay a lot, this amount of money to a person who's been only half time professor? Like, am I, I, people are going to think I'm like a joke was yeah. of a professor, you know? Yeah. And because like, I have all these self team issues, not confident at all, at all. And then I have to, you know, work on this. But in the moment that I started working on it, it just mm. transformed. Mm fast yeah. <laughs> I'm, yeah. so, I'm so proud of you because I, I remember where you started and I just thought yeah wow this when you smash an old belief that is yeah. so exciting it's so exciting. yeah you see the evidence you see the evidence yeah Cause yeah people, people yeah often say to me how do you know if a belief's gone it's like the <clears> result <throat> changes that oh yeah you know that is good. Oh, yeah. 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 I was telling, I was teaching a marketing class today and then uh, we're running a social media campaign. Yeah. And then I told them, you know, they told me we, some colleagues said that I'm crazy to do this with freshmen, which is their first year of college. Yeah. But I'm like, just now I'm living my life, but I want to prove people wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't explain why. I'm like, I just, that's how I like to live. Yeah. And the, and the most amazing thing is that, because uh, I listen a lot of Abraham Hicks too, because mm -hmm. you, you led me to Abraham Hicks. Yep. So I, th I listen when they say, oh, ask, ask, for the, uh, ask, ask the universe. I want to be around more people that think like me now, yeah. right? Because so, I, I watch your videos. I talk to you like through coaching still, and I watch uh, dance videos. But it's not yes. the same, and then you are around people that don't think like you. Yes. So the most amazing thing is um, for one day I was, I call an Uber and then the lady that riding the Uber said, isn't this a beautiful day? I'm so thankful that the universe <laughs> brought, brought us such a beautiful day. And I thought, Oh, people generally don't talk like that. Yeah. So then, uh, so then we started talking and then she asked me, do you listen to Abraham Hicks? I'm like, yeah. And then she's like, Oh, <laughs> So then I said, I told her, and then she said the same, like, I asked the universe to bring me people that think more like I do. Well, and then my, um, the, so I am across a professor, a lady, and then next to another professor, and they both, like, talk about the universe and energy and raising their vibration. Wow. And I thought, oh, my gosh. And then, like, and that was in my original office. One of the professors left, and I requested, even before I started my job, I heard that she left. So I sent an email <laughs> to my boss, and I said, could it be possible if I get her office? Because when I came for the job interview, I saw where her law office was located, and it's in the building that a lot of classrooms are. So I'm coming from Florida where it doesn't snow, coming to a place that snows a lot. So my, well, my, so my thought was, I can be where the classrooms are and I don't have to get out in the yeah. snow when it's not. Yeah, snows. yeah. So I said, but they might gonna think bad about me because I haven't even started. I'm request making requests already. But no, they give me that office and that <laughs> office is across these two faculty who are into this. Yeah. So yeah. it's just um, amazing how things work out and um, it's just so cool. Like going yeah. back to because if I, like, you know, like, I don't want people to think, like, I am exaggerating or anything. Like, I literally yeah. had no job, like, only half part-time job for six years, had no money, no savings. Oh, yeah. and I was able to buy a house. Oh, <laughs> wow! Already? So, I was going to, I came in April to look for a rental property. Yeah. And then I find out that the rents are insanely high here. Yeah. So then through, I was, I joined a group of the town where I live uh, through Facebook. And then I saw this guy post and he said, oh, there is a new program with Massachusetts government when you don't need a down payment for your home. 
Okay. So if you qualify, so then I contacted him because I had no savings for down payment. Yeah. So I qualified and then that was able to buy a home. <laughs> are, you, are you in the house now? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! And then in my and then it has two car garage. It's an old house built in 1930. Yeah. And it needed a little bit of repair, so actually, like the I had like a handyman for two weeks. He just left today. But I like I instead of paying rent because rent rent was just too much. Yeah. It was almost three thousand dollars a month in rent, and I wow. said no, that's is way too much. And then buying a house, it was way cheaper which I never thought that would, wow, that yeah. would be the case. Yeah. And then I, yeah. And then I, I wanted, you know, a, a town with like good schools where I could like, I, everything that I wrote, it happened and it didn't hit me until the other day when he said, this garage needs to be fixed a lot, but we can do it after the winter because you don't want to lose this, this, you know, structure because I'm used to car garage. And then I thought, Oh my God. Yes. This house has a two-car garage. I read this in my, vis in my visualization board. I said I wanted a two-car garage. <laughs> wow. Wow, you had some, you've had some accelerated manifesting. <laughs> so then from having no money, I was yeah. able to yeah. buy the house. Yeah. And then, the, then there was a hiccup there with, the, with that program. And then, like, <clears throat> I have to have some money from my mom like use it to buy it but then i was able to pay her back yeah. like almost instantly but like the way that everything worked out it was just like how who can you buy a, how can you buy a house with literally no money yes <laughs> that, yeah. that doesn't it's happen it's possible obviously yeah uh -huh. yeah that doesn't happen yeah so like i now i went from living in a very small apartment and still i was sharing still with my ex-husband because i had no money to live on my own yeah. no job no full time nothing and then i oh and i bought a second car so oh. i met this guy <laughs> I, <laughs> I met this guy uh through uh facebook through this group from the town that i live yeah and he's a mechanic and i told him i might have to buy a second car because i might get an au pair but i didn't get the au pair my sister and my brother my sister is here helping me and then my brother's gonna come but i still need a second car yeah so he said okay i i said since it's gonna be old i need help with somebody that knows about car yeah buying it because i you know i don't know anything about car he said yeah. sure i can help you well about i moved here in july <clears throat> in the middle of august he called me and said I have this uh, from a friend who is selling this car for like $500. He said, he's in really good condition. He just needs to sell it fast and I'll fix it for you for free if you buy it, but today. And I'm like, are you serious? Wow. He said, yeah. Wow. <laughs> so you've got the car, the second car for the yeah. garage, double garage, you bought the house, you got the amazing job. Boy, next year yeah. have, we'll have the most fantastic relationship we've ever seen. Uh, that, yeah, that, that's still in progress. <laughs> <laughs> With your manifesting skills, <laughs> I don't think it'll take you that long. But he said, you know, that it, it doesn't happen overnight. Like I, I don't, you know, like I, what I want people to understand is that it doesn't happen overnight. It's a lot of work. It's not. I was like from but I was like I was so sad I was crying every day yeah I didn't understand like how come because I was thinking you know I'm not that old I'm like 36 yeah. last year when I was like I'm 35 years old yes I have two kids but I like I'm well educated I have you know I have degrees yeah. I have work experience I've been a professor for 11 years and yeah and I have industry experience and I like, how somebody becomes like be so low like yeah. it doesn't make like i'm i so then i started thinking you know i'm not like a w wife or like i'm a professional then i'm yeah. a smart then you told me like oh you are you are worth i'm worthy i'm worthy i'm worthy yeah. i'm important i'm first best yeah and that became like every day saying it for hundreds and hundreds of times and okay. i love myself yeah. and 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 even today when i have hard time I go to, I'm, I'm first base, I'm first base, I'm first base, I'm important, I'm worthy, I love myself, I love myself, I love yeah. myself. And then that helps me to calm, calm my mind. Mm. So, but it's not, it's not, 
I think that the brain is like your muscle. I think you yeah. explained that. Like when you go to you go to the gym all the yeah. time, and then you go like you know your muscles are tight, and then you stop going, and then you're like this. So then you stop doing yeah. the work on yourself, and then you go back to the to old patterns. Old patterns and negative. Yeah. Patterns, usually. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I still have to do some work in that. Uh, yeah. When it comes to relationships, I still, <laughs> like I told you the other day, like I wish I could transfer my confidence now in my work into my self life. Yeah. But it's still, but now what I think is I, I don't get frustrated or, or sad or like I, I think this is a process yeah. and then I'm working on that process and yeah. it's not the same. It's just like I, the, the way that I view life now is like that, like it's a, it's a process and it's okay if today I'm not okay, tomorrow will be a different day. And I reset, yeah. like Abraham Hicks teaches. Reset. Yeah. Like it's a reset. So then I, I keep going and try. Because no, I don't think any human being can be perfect because we are here for a reason. How I understand it, like evolving, evolving. spiritually. Mm, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So if we will be, per you know, up there will be like never almost instantly imagine it and, like, and getting it like this but yeah. it's a constant work it is. on yourself yeah yeah but isn't it exciting yeah. when you see i was crying all the time then i did yeah. this. i watched lots of youtubes i did lots yeah. of affirmations and now look where i am so if i can do it with this i can do it with that with that yeah with that. so yeah so can you share with the viewers okay you obviously did a lot of learning by yeah. watching a lot of youtubes you also did a lot yeah. of affirmations <clears throat> did you and i read a lot of books you read a lot of books, okay? But you must yeah. have did a lot of applying. You applied things. You didn't just read it; you did it. Yeah, I did it. So, like the affirmations, I did it. Then I did the uh, visualization board. Then I did the the wheel. The oh, focus wheel. The focus wheel. Ah, okay. yep. <clears throat> then I did like visualization. Then I did what I exp what I told you about the driving and thinking. I'm not here. I'm not. I am actually this, like these trees that I'm seeing, these palm trees that I'm seeing, they're not really palm trees. They are ma maple trees. They're losing yeah. the, their leaves. Well, cause when I, the, it's not really that hot. It's like it's getting into the fall because in Florida it's hot until December. Yeah. So I started to start thinking that way. Yeah. And then I really had to stop talking to people about my, about my job search. Yes, yes. I had to stop that, especially with some few people that I had around, if they were positive and supporting, then I, they would ask me, I say, I'm, I'm going through an interview, I'm doing this. But yeah. those are the ones that I identify like energy vampire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then I, I had to stop. So they will ask me, how is the job search going? I would say, it's going great. Great things are coming. But what are you doing? I'm like, well, I cannot tell you yet, but I'm yeah. not, great things are coming. Yeah. And that's how, and then when they started to, but, you know, you've been out of a full-time job for a long And I said, like, but I know the great times, things are coming, and I'll share with you when I'm ready. Yeah. And that's how I had to stop them, because it's, otherwise they will just get in my head. Yeah. And <clears throat> their thoughts will get in, you know, will become my thoughts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then, exactly. yeah, so wow. I, had to, I had to do that. I had to be like, I have to create that um, barrier to be yep. uh, emotionally and mentally healthy. Yep. saying okay that's fine it's not that you're a bad person it's just that we probably at different stages yep. and yeah and then in the moment when i got the job like i in the moment that i signed the letter i took a picture i sent it like to a few people <laughs> and then i i was listening to raise your glass by pink so i like yes. recorded a video like that's what i did and send it to the closer <laughs> because I'm like I some of them like knew how sad I was and um, and and how like crying all the time I was yeah. so now like I now I want you to see me how happy yeah. I am. <laughs> but this, you know and, what, mm -hmm. Priscilla? This story just shows when you have no money, you have no savings, <laughs> you've got no income, you've got just a part-time job, you're living with yeah. your husband, you don't. Yeah. So like everything can be look wrong. Really bad and wrong on paper, yeah. but it's the vision and the imagination that pulls you out. And you did that. Yeah. You used everything to pull yourself yeah. out of it. Yeah. The other day I went to, um, last Sunday, 
my kids were still asleep, which is a miracle. In the early morning, they wake up very early. So I went in, and sat on the porch and I thought, if I knew two years ago what I will be today, I will have, you know, save all those tears because yes. it's like I will never have in my wildest dreams, I will never have imagined this how my life would turn out. Like I I had never imagined. And it's it was just this moment when I sucked everything in and I said, I'm sitting in my house, <laughs> like, you know, preparing the class for tomorrow in my job that I really like, with people that like everything. So yeah. now when I start, like, my, the negative chatter comes, and, I, and I, so then that's something that I start thinking, oh, but look at what happened. Yeah. So why will be anything different? So even now when I'm worried or I, I start being worried and I catch myself, I start thinking, Yes, but everything is possible. It just, yeah. it might, I might don't have it now, but I know I'll have it later on. Yeah. And then plus I email you with the coaching because, you know, <laughs> when I was like, okay, I need I, my Agnes refresher. <laughs> <laughs> I need a refresher. <laughs> yeah, right. so. With, with that story, I think you can start coaching people. <laughs> well, remember, so remember that I started my channel, my YouTube channel in Spanish? Yeah. So what happened is that I thought, when I was looking for information, there was not much information in Spanish. And yeah. then I watched you and I was uh, Dan. And then, and then when I saw that Ramon Sanso, this uh, Spanish author, yeah. and he has so much good information, but also it's, um, not many people get to him. He's not that very, like, you're very charismatic. And, and Dan is too. He's very dry and serious. So it's different approach. Yes. So then I thought, did I know that many channels in Spanish? Wow. So then I start. I posted a video in Spanish in February, just like random. Yeah. And then, and then like, I got like a four subscribers and I thought, somebody wants to watch what I'm saying. <laughs> so then I thought... <laughs> So then I thought like, oh, I'm going to start translating Agnes's video that I told you, remember? And yeah. then I said, well, and then I also added videos like based on my personal experience, what I have learned so far. Yep. And then I had like this lady, Melanie, she's like, I'll pay you if you like talk to me. I'm like, oh, my, my previous self it will say, oh, you don't have to. But then I thought, okay, it's yep. fine. Yep. Because, because my previous self was like, really, I'm not qualified to do this. And then, yes. then I, my new self was like, if she's asking me, it's for a reason. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So then I now have, you know, like I have this channel and I, I, had in, I have interviewed a few people. I interviewed the other day a lady, a girl from Ecuador. Yeah. That she I has a similar. Is it, all, is it all in Spanish <clears throat> on your channel? All in Spanish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Spanish. Yeah. Be I'll, because I'll they were. I'll put the link down below, so because there's a lot of Spanish people that watch the channel, I'll put it down below. Thank you, thank you. So there were not that many. There are not that many channels like yours and Dan there. Yeah. And then I thought, well, you know, people can benefit from this. Yeah. So then I, I found a few uh, naval chapters that been translating in Spanish, so I read them. Yeah. Or um, in some of the stories, like the one that the girl is crying, so I. I can like read in English, but the, like I'm reading it, but I'm translating as I'm in Spanish. Yes. I might be doing it. And then the one from uh, this old lady, the Fiorel Escovel, well, I forget. The, uh, your War, Your One. Oh, Florence Scovel Shin. Florence, yes. yeah. I really, really, I really like uh, that yep. book. So then I also like have made a few videos where I talk Excellent. about her. So I say like, you know, because people say like, I said, you know, you can watch that here and you can watch them, but some people understand English, some people don't. Some people don't. Yeah. But you know what, Priscilla, the mm -hmm. fact that there's no one doing it means that you can be at the forefront of starting, starting this law of yeah. Neville in Spanish. You know, it's, it's. Yeah. And then this other girl, this girl from Ecuador that I interviewed, one of the persons that watches my channel said oh i i also watch her and she her channel is new she started like in july amaya was in february something like that yeah. and then so the other day we talked and then he thought the this guy thought that i was gonna say oh no like that's competition or anything and i was actually so excited and say yeah. yeah somebody else is doing it <laughs> no, the more yeah, the more the merrier yeah exactly <laughs> and there is no competition no 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 like, so we, we it's pretty cool all. we can't do it all i mean i no. said that to me about veronica oh you know, veronica, yeah it's like no veronica and i do the same thing 
we can join forces and work yeah. together and Dan and every, it's like, yeah, yeah. you have to have people yeah. that are like your colleagues. Yeah, exactly. And maybe, maybe some people connect better with you, you know, and then some people will connect better, better with, with Veronica exactly. and then, you know, but it's all of the same is yeah, you know it just teach so i have like 850 something subscribers now <laughs> how many how many videos have you done um for 63 something oh, like wow. that so cool. yeah yeah wow, yeah that's yeah yeah fabulous. yeah so and then uh, the, my sister helps like i she's good with the computer and all that so she's like edit them and yeah. add them the thumbnail yeah, so yeah yeah because yeah. i'm like i i want people to have this knowledge because they're like i met them yes yeah. but if they don't know english they're not going to be able to and then it. yeah and then the spanish-speaking population is large so i'm like somebody gotta do it <laughs> somebody's gotta do it yeah yeah yeah, and, yeah. And, you, and the thing is priscilla you're you really naturally love all this information so it's easy yeah when you're passionate about something, it's just easy to do it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And then I, I think that because, like I told you, like the first time when I watched The Secret, I thought that's a bunch of, you know, yeah. BS. But I wasn't ready to uh, get that information then. Yeah. But in the moment when I was ready at that moment, when I watched that Ram Ramon Sanso video, then I remembered The Secret, yeah. then I read it. And then Googling stuff about The Secret, let me to your channel for some reason yeah so it just all comes come together when it's time yeah when it's like the divine time when the, your, the person is ready so it's really cool to feel like how you know things start making sense and how yeah. things start being together like for example at this job <clears throat> like two years ago that i i, I you know this but people don't need, know don't, don't know this i was dating this guy who has a ptsd yeah. post-traumatic stress disorder because he went to war so because of him, I started donating money to an organization, nonprofit. Yeah. He was going to go there to try to get better, go to a, um, a healing retreat. Yeah. He ended up not going, but I was, I still, you know, think that what this organization does is just amazing. So when I moved here to Massachusetts in July, I went to one of the graduations for the retreats and see their work. Yeah. And now... My students in marketing are going to are doing a social media campaign to raise funds for that organization, and the executive director is coming to campus yep. to talk with these people. Yep. So something that it happened, and you know, mm -hmm. I started for some other reason. Now I connected yep. to my career, what I'm doing now. Wow. Like similar with a, with similar like I with another company is coming next semester that I contacted them. While I was sad and while I was doing this, I was trying to to lose weight. And then I um I I printed like a body of a slim woman and put put my my face on it. Yes. And then I but I didn't know that I was I didn't know that this is kind of, was visualization at that time. Yeah. And then in one year I was able to lose eighty five pounds. Wow. So yeah. So then th <laughs> that was when I was like really depressed and all of that. But now this company that I was following, then they're coming to talk with my students. So what I'm trying to say is, you don't know how things are going to come together. Because yes. now what I did, like this, it seems to me that what I was going through and learning, it wasn't just in vain. You know, it was, it didn't happen for whatever really randomly. Yes. Now they are also coming back in my life now that I can use them as a resource for my work. Yeah. And then my work can also give them more work. Yeah. So it's just the connection. Yeah. It's, it's really, really cool how life works. And not only yeah. that, then the losing weight, manifesting the job, yeah. um, buying the house can all go into success stories for your Spanish YouTube channel. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so you, oh. have, like, you know how things like, come together and work like this. I think you talk about this or Dan was. They yeah. said sometimes when we are frustrated, we just see the the trees that certain tree we don't see the whole forest yeah and that's what happened to me when i was you know i thought everything was so disconnected i didn't yeah. make sense why but i didn't see how all the things like all the process that i was going mm -hmm. through learning and yeah. what i had what i uh, went through led me to what i am today if i didn't go if i hadn't gone through what i went through with 
getting divorced and all of that, I will yeah. not be able to get in the process of awakening, let's say it like yeah. that way. Yeah. <laughs> so, exactly. so, you know, so now it will be like, oh, I think what well, that makes sense, you know, even though it was really hard, it led me to what I am today. So I feel a better person, like, yeah. you know, for myself now. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. and overcoming something is such yeah. a, just, you just feel so good about yourself when you overcome something really hard. Yeah, yeah. And then the understanding that, um, you know, that you don't have to under, I, this was for me an awakening that I have to understand that I am responsible for my happiness. Yeah. Nobody is responsible for my happiness because I used to blame my ex husband and he didn't make me happy. This yeah. and the happiness. Yeah. Well, yeah, but even though I'm not happy about something, then I can change that. So then I am happy about something. Exactly. That was a, like yeah. oh, an aha moment for me. I yeah. didn't, I didn't realize that. I know because yeah. I think women, especially, we get taught that. Yeah. I don't know, and it's probably well, yeah. it is. It's from our mother's generation and our grandmother's yeah. generation that a man is there to make you happy. Yeah, and it's not even that they say it in their words. It's like it's passed down through just watching them. Yeah. And them complaining uh, about men or them saying, oh, he doesn't do this or he doesn't do that. Or yeah. He to do this. It's all that dialogue that they used has come down yeah. to us. And for some reason, our generation is the generation that goes, hang on a minute. No, I'm in charge of my happiness. And yeah. then freedom begins. And, the, and then you're not only, you're not looking at them to give you happiness. You're then able to give them something yeah it's yeah. good so yeah and then like how what a pressure is for men Isn't the women yeah. the women i think like you, but no wonder why men say they're not afraid of getting mm -hmm. married because now you're not only responsible for your happiness you're yeah. the responsible for the happiness of somebody else i know and who that's exhausting that? i mean you think of it if it was that way well, where a man was looking to you that you've got to make yourself happy and you've got to make him happy the pressure that we would feel and we never think of it exactly that. So, exactly yeah it is good when you understand that they have every right to be free of making you yeah. happy and that you can be in, in a really good self-loving state and give to your partner yeah it is yeah. honestly it creates really good relationships when both people understand that not just the man the woman does yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And, and also the yeah. And, and also the knowing that now they Okay, it's not that I have not gone through difficult like time. Like sometimes when I talk with people in, through my Spanish channel, they think, "Oh, you know, well, your life is so rosy and perfect." I'm yeah. like, "No, no, <laughs> no." But now you have this knowing and and that this will pass. This will pass, yeah. and it will be better. Like yeah. I, it will be better. It's just. It's a different way of feeling that before it was just, <laughs> yeah, and you're so stuck in it. Whereas now you go, hang on a minute. I yeah. know, I know everything's me pushed out. So if that's over there in front of me and I don't like it, what am I doing? That that's yeah. It. Oh, oh, why, oh, why do I have, what do I have to do in order for that to go away? <laughs> yeah, what do I have to do for it to go away? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And yeah. another thing I needed that for me, it was also because I had a really hard time always saying no and just yeah. kind of taking the crap from people. Like people will say, there is a book called the 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 garbage can, the garbage truck syndrome or something like that. People will just take it, like just dump it on you, everything. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm able to say like I really don't want that. Like I try to be still nice and kind, yeah. but I say like I I really don't want that yeah. in my life now. Yeah. And then because it's not it's not fair just to just take it all and exactly like so setting that you know limits and yeah what you want in your life or what yep. you don't want in your life before i felt like i have to give explanation and always be yep. open and yep. now i'm like well if i don't want that in my life i don't <laughs> i don't and it's just no no yeah <laughs> yeah yeah no so uh, but you know yeah so yeah so it's a work it's, it's, con it's a continuous work i know that some days if i don't do it then i you know i'll go back to those old patterns but at least i catch myself into yeah. those old patterns yeah. and, so, and then I, and then i i said you know it's a it takes a village because i have you as a mentor and then i'm there yeah. <laughs> then you always are like okay i need some youtube here <laughs> <laughs> 
why do I do like Abraham Hicks a few and then like, yeah. Agnes and then mm-hmm. and then you're like okay because yeah. you know like we just said it's not we are here to progress and to evolve mm-hmm. spiritually so it's not going to happen from one day to the next no I, I'm saying this because a lot of people yeah. say how long it takes yeah. how long it's going to yeah. take how long it takes <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it is <sighs> constant you know yeah. I mean, I mean, even for me too, every day I've got to go, okay, I've got to do my walk. I'm going to do my affirmations in the middle of mm-hmm. the day what, because I work with people a lot and I'm yeah. on, I'm on the computer a lot. So I need to yeah. get off the computer. I lay on the couch. I mean, I'm often traveling. So I just lay on the couch wherever I am and I mm-hmm. shut my eyes and I do a, you know, 45 minutes to one hour meditation. Then I've recharged oh, wow. and then I go back to my computer or I'll do uh-huh. my weights. I'll go and have a coffee somewhere. So I go outside, get some fresh air, you know, uh-huh. but every day I think, okay, have I done this? Did I take care of myself with that? You know, I've got to make uh-huh. sure I cook good food. So you're looking at all these things all day long and that just uh-huh. keeps you in a, in a much elevated vibe. So, yeah. I remember some of oh, the few of the first few videos that I watched from you, you used to say, Make sure that you exercise, that you drink enough water, that yeah. you eat good foods. Yeah. And it's just a whole, you, like the way that you taught, that you teach us is a holistic view. Yeah. It's not just this part. No, it's no. like a whole person. Yeah. So, yeah. so that, that makes a lot of sense. You know, if you're not sleeping well and mm. you don't really know taking time to recharge. Yeah. Getting outside mm. and... And all of that, getting your exercise, that it's just, you're not drinking of what, you know, so yeah. it's, it's a whole view. Yeah. So I remember thinking, well, that's, that's weird that Australian lady telling us to drink mm. water. Yeah. <laughs> but it, yeah. Yeah. Well, but it just, is, it makes so much sense. It does. When you don't drink water, you start getting yep. your vibe yep. goes down. If you don't sleep yeah. enough, you get cranky. Oh, yeah. And if you don't, you don't, um, if you put it, if you're expending too much energy, a lot of people yeah. email me and they say, I'm trying to do all this law of attraction stuff, but I'm exhausted. And it's like, well, you can't manifest if you're exhausted. You know yeah. what? Just go to bed for a week early, mm-hmm. get, get it. So you wake up and you feel better. You don't wake up. Mm-hmm. tired. A lot yeah. of people wake up tired or they don't sleep properly. Yeah. You can't manifest mm-hmm. if you're down here feeling terrible about basic yeah. things. You've got to get those yeah. basic for things in place. Then your mind's clearer. Then you start to be able to focus on processes, but you can't focus yeah. with a clear mind if you've had three or four hours sleep. You can't. Yeah, yeah. And I also think that maybe sometimes as human, we like to overcomplicate stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it like we are asking the universe for things constantly. So it's yeah. not that what we have to do is complicated or what is that you work here? What is that? It's like basically just be yourself, wish it yeah. <laughs> and wait. And wait. <laughs> and wait. And, wait. <laughs> <laughs> and keep, yeah. you know, working on affirmations, working on yourself. And yeah. then, because you shouldn't feel, you shouldn't, you shouldn't feel tired of doing it. No. You actually should feel excited and happy to see and the it, progress yes and it makes yeah. you uplifts your energy uplifts your vibe yeah yeah, yeah exactly yeah. so if you if you feel tired and drained yeah it's then mm. is, there is something there that is not yep. right exactly mm-hmm. exactly yeah wow yeah. wow wow i am so proud of you <laughs> thank you I no mean, i couldn't you know i wow. couldn't have done it without you you saved me wow. <laughs> you and dan Send me. <laughs> well, the thing is, well, Priscilla, you know, Dan and I talk a lot and Veronica, we talk a lot, but some people listen and some people listen and apply and you yeah. listened and applied. I mean, that, <laughs> that month that you said you watched all these videos and read all these, I mean, you read on book. mission. <laughs> I was a book, laser yeah. focus. I'm like, I'm doing this yeah. and see if it will, and like, I just yeah. doing it. Because yeah. it makes sense. So, and then the, you know the yeah. coolest thing is that you talk about Neville, and ne- you know all his writings and, and lectures are from forty years ago, whatever years ago. But those are timeless. So timeless. the videos that you put that here on YouTube, as long as YouTube is in business, they are timeless too. So yeah. you can just come and yeah. look through them. It doesn't matter where you post them. They they have you know time have no relevance into this work. 
That's true. So that's true. so that's good. Yeah. So thank you so much for all your work. I really appreciate you very, very much. You that I recommend your channel to everybody. Oh. Say, you know this lady, Agnes. Oh. <laughs> and then <laughs> you're going to see them and they're going to see these. And I yeah. tell you my channel, like if you know English and they just go and see these and my God, they are my mentors and it's just like I you know, I you came to my life in the moment when I was like down and then yeah. now you're you you can you saw the progress and you see me up, but I was just like really really down and yeah. it was just it's amazing that you being in australia or in england like yeah. how you can save somebody's life who is across the ocean and yeah. that's i think the, the work that you do is just incredible and i really appreciate you so much all my life i will be grateful oh that's beautiful <laughs> well i i you know this is why i do what i do is when people help themselves and then they and then they go on and then they help other people. It's like you're paying yeah. it forward. Yeah, yeah, you know? absolutely. It's like you're like this. Know. This knowledge has to be shared. Yeah. You cannot just skip it to yourself. You can't. <laughs> and the thing is, you will become someone else's mentor, and they will say the same yeah. to you. And then it gets passed yeah. on and passed on and passed on. And yes, that's what's yeah. so great. It well, is. It is fantastic. Thank mm -hmm. you for a brilliant. Thank you. Uh, that hour again just went like that. It just goes. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, thank you so much Agnes I really really appreciate it and I watch your videos all the time oh, yeah. okay well we, thank you we will say goodbye to the viewers but Priscilla you stay on and we'll say goodbye in private okay um, so do you want to say goodbye to everyone and bye everyone they, they keep listening to Agnes like she knows what she's talking about <laughs> <laughs> bye everybody bye, bye. bye.